In a wind-whipped, sun-soaked corner of the Mojave Desert, thousands of people immerse themselves in a post-apocalyptic event celebrating the wasteland, where their middle finger is a greeting. And everyone is welcomed into this dirty, dysfunctional, awesomely unique family. My name is Jared Butler, and we are at Wasteland Weekend in the Mojave Desert in California. Wasteland Weekend is a five-day post-apocalyptic party in the desert, Mad Max style, with costumes required for everyone. And we get about 4,000 people or more out here and hundreds of themed vehicles. A lot of the stuff we're doing with the cars is, is kind of new in a way, uh, trying to create our own category of Wasteland cars. Um, you know, people love to debate car titles and car types and what's a rat rod and what's a custom and what's a street rod and they try to have, put all these rules on it and we're more about just letting people have fun and create some cool stuff. And create they do. Every kind of vehicle imaginable, each with its own purpose and character, cars, trucks, buses, bikes, you name it. From the recognizable shells of known vehicles to customized marvels of wasteland ingenuity. Mine is a 1939 Dodge luxury liner. I really wanted something that was late 30s. Uh, I happened to find this uh, for sale in someone's large backyard in the desert. Um, and I said, you know what, that's the car. My name is Morgan Milstead. I'm uh, out of Phoenix, Arizona. Why are we here? I've built this piece of shit. <laughs> What is it? Oh my god. Okay. What it is, is badass. And like much of what you'll see out here, extremely unique. A wasteland vehicle is something that is just mental. Me, the most important thing is the look, because the whole idea of this, they're based on movie cars. These are not based on practical cars, this is not based on historical restoration. So I would say it's about what do you want to, what do you want to present to people? Uh, what do you want people to look at and just say, wow. My name is Seth Howard. I'm at Wasteland Weekend. I'm a member of the Warspawn tribe, which is all the bad guys from Fury Road. And standing next to the meet and greet of all the Black Thumbs, all the guys who build cars. Hey, I'm Spud. Uh, I'm here at Wasteland Weekend. Uh, we're on a tribe called Black Thumb, and we're out here fucking shit up and having fun. Having fun is an understatement. This place is a blast. A Wasteland vehicle is a vehicle that can be driven in the apocalypse, it's something that can survive the apocalypse, has been through a war, has been through a whatever else. One of the most important parts of Wasteland Vehicles is the ability to survive, to be able to cross any kind of terrain, to be able to hide, to go fast, to go slow, to go around, to get over stuff, to go through stuff. So it's got to be solid. When building something like this, you need to be creative, you need to think outside of the box, and you need to have a good eye for scavenging. I think you just need to have that uh, artistic eye to see the, the beauty in rust and the beauty in making stuff not perfect, getting away from that glossy finish. We couldn't agree more. There are a ton of philosophical similarities with rat rod culture here. Build what you can with what you got. A wasteland vehicle to me is something that uh, represents who you are. It shows off your personality, your creativity, um, what you see when you look at things that others consider garbage. It's a survival tool, it's a means of transportation, it's your home, it's your base camp. Um, it's kind of everything in one. You need it to do a lot of different things for you. It needs to be versatile. Uh, you gotta be able to move quickly. Um, if you can't move quickly, you gotta be armored and protected. Or if, say, if you're a scavenger, you need space to keep all your things or all your tools and your equipment. For me, I love metal, so just like looking at scrap piles of metal and seeing what I can turn it into and recycle it and repurpose it to make it something badass like the Corvette we have. <laughs> Fuck you! Yeah! 
it works to limit yourself if you think well if I was stuck out in a field and I can only have what was on hand how would I make this work and um, it's amazing when you limit yourself like that the creativity begins to grow exponentially the creativity here is almost overwhelming from the cars to the people everything is a display of personality and its own artistic wasteland culture my name is Pierce. I go by Scrawny Cash. We're from Dallas, Texas. And uh, this here's the Cruel Bus. A Wasteland vehicle is, um, it uh, embodies a story and it tells you everything about the tribe and what we're doing and just the journey to get here. Some things you see here have you wondering what in the world is going on, while others stay true to movie lore. Either way, everyone has a story. Uh, what a Wasteland vehicle is, in my opinion, uh, is something that's very unusual but yet practical. Uh, generally, it's a vehicle that's uh, using parts that are discarded or you know old thrown out trash, uh, repurposed into something that's usable that you would find in the apocalypse. Which at a moment in time, maybe when uh, manufacturing has stopped, um, and then, uh, everything gets reused in a, in a better, better fashion or better way. And as you can see in here by our battle with the wind, or the W as it's referred to out here, the wasteland can be a pretty harsh environment. Everything from the camps to the vehicles to wardrobe details reflect that. The most important feature of a wasteland vehicle would be defense to me because defense you're always going to have people coming to attack you in the apocalypse and try and take what's yours so you need to keep what's yours here. this car was a 68 ranchero and a 99 chevrolet tahoe and how much time did you put into this i've put almost two years whether it's taken years or days to build their post-apocalyptic rides, every builder has their own vision and style. And like rat rods, no two are exactly alike. Uh, wasteland vehicle to me is a, is a vehicle you have when the shit hits the fan, or if you didn't have a vehicle, it's something you piece together along the road from different pieces of cars here and there. And it's something that's almost like a horse from the Western times. Uh, if you had no horse to get around, you were basically dead. To build a wasteland vehicle, uh, mine was just basically, uh, I was driven by the love of, of the car and the Mad Max lore of uh, having a Falcon, couldn't afford it, so I took the next best thing, a Ford Torino, and turned it into a Torino Scepter. And it's just a work of love, man. It's therapy. Sounds familiar, right? Home-built, resourceful, creative, passionate. A lot of these common values are right here in the wasteland. I brought my Camaro here on a Chevy 350 under the hood we got some off-road tires for you know traction and that kind of thing got some spares in case we uh, get into some gunfight stuff like that take my wheel out in case someone wants to steal it I have it with me usually throw it at someone too or beat them with it you never know I mean you don't even realize it yet but what I'm gonna do after this interview is I'm gonna shoot you and I'm gonna take your camera and I'm gonna sell it to my neighbor for, you know, 100 bucks, and I can get some uh, dog food. Wasteland Weekend and the whole Wasteland vehicle culture is different than any automotive experience on Earth, or what's left of it. You can't help but appreciate the creativity and imperfect beauty here, not to mention the passion behind the builds and the genre itself. it with wires, you drill it, and it 
last. Makes a little noise, but that's what it's all about. My name is Ron Griffith. Uh, I live in here in California City, California. My vehicle is the Monster Carlo, 72 Monte Carlo. Pretty much all bone stock drivetrain, and we built what you see uh, in front of you. This is our scrounge parts, you know. Uh, everything we, we, we put it together with was all just stuff that we found either in wrecking yards or in abandoned lots and stuff like that. We didn't steal much of it. Well, maybe a little, but you know, not much. Probably the most important thing with a Wasteland vehicle is reliability. Uh, you don't want to, I mean, sure, it looks great on the outside, you can see what I've done, okay, but under the hood, it's got to be good. Everything has to work, everything has to be functional. Uh, make sure you got good tires, make sure you got good brakes, make sure you got a good drivetrain, okay? Old cars strip oil and stuff, that's fine, okay, but the fact is, you need to have a reliable car, okay, because if it sits at your camp, like some kind of yard art, then you didn't you didn't get the full effect. These are so much fun to drive, and if you can't drive it, they need to be reliable. They really need to be reliable. Whatever differences there are between wasteland and rat rod culture, three simple words transcend both. Build, drive, enjoy.